My work is really invested in the power dynamics of myth-making and I think also the power dynamics of who gets to control narratives. I'm Gray Wilabinski. I'm an artist who works with a range of medium from sculpture and printmaking and video and performance. The exhibition is called By Any Means and it emerged out of research I'd been doing and kind of using in my own work for the last few years. I was really thinking about why one might need to enact revenge, might need to avenge someone or stick up for themselves or kind of look back into time and space and, and relate to their own ancestors in a certain way. All these different ways that revenge exists I really wanted to give space to. So that really related to when I was thinking about the artists I wanted to invite, was kind of thinking about the wide range of um, forms of revenge that art might take and, and wanted to invite artists I thought really did that really thoughtfully and generously. I was really lucky to be mentored by Margot Norton, who's a curator at the New Museum, and she was really helpful helping me hone in my choices for artists. Zadie Cha and Dala Nasser made new works for the exhibition, which I was really humbled and excited by. Aside from them as well, it's myself and Umar Rashid, frequently known as Frohawk Two Feathers, Sunil Gupta, and Danielle Brathwaite Shirley. It felt really exciting and important for me to to have my first curatorial experience be around these types of ideas and basically wanting to invite artists that make work um, that I can't and that I'm inspired by and that kind of expand on these ideas. Sunil's work, which spans decades of documenting himself and also subcultures and friends and family, really shows and demonstrates love for the people that he photographs and the communities that he kind of enters and becomes a part of. It just is truly generous and I think in a lot of ways hopeful, despite sometimes being quite an upsetting subject matter in some cases. These are from a series called From Here to Eternity. After he was diagnosed with HIV, he also was thinking about kind of the spaces he inhabits and the world around him and then also taking these self-portraits. I was really interested in the potential for revenge through artwork to be in some ways a form of memento mori, like just to be making art is, I think for a lot of artists, this way of kind of saying I'm here and I'm alive and it will um, in one way or another outlive us. But I think that takes on a particularly um, poignant and specific context with, uh, within, for example, the AIDS crisis and the ongoing AIDS crisis and how it's a, it's a form of diagnosis and in some ways, you know, terrible illness and death that was arguably preventable and at the very least um, was villainized and stigmatized and ignored by, uh, and if not villainized by these systems of power for so long. I also was interested in kind of thinking about the natural world a bit more too and, and our relation to animals and kind of how we project onto them, which I explore in my work and Zadie does in a pretty different way, but I think she does it really well. And so we started talking a lot about her relationship to animals and myth making and particularly through her Korean identity. She was talking a lot about the fox figure as kind of this trickster character that can sometimes be maligned, but also has a very important and like potent role in mythology and wanting to kind of reframe it. I think her work already was invested in revenge in some ways, but I think by naming it that, it really was exciting to see how planting a seed of an idea can kind of just let someone else completely expand upon and run with this idea. Dala Nasser really wanted to do a rubbing, an etching of Ghassan Kanafani's uh, grave in Beirut, where she currently is and where she's from. Ghassan Kanafani was a writer and a Palestinian activist who was murdered 49 years ago with his niece in a car bomb, and he's buried in Lebanon. The work then after the show will be sent on to Palestine. Umar Rashid uses humor really in interesting ways and also reframes existing iconographies and, and mark making in order to kind of intentionally have you rethink our relationship to these narratives and reoccurring motifs. They're also dealing a lot with Afrofuturism and potentialities and kind of going back and forth between the past and the future and, and really in this generative and creative way proposing alternatives and alternative realities. 
Danielle Brathwaite Shirley, she does all of the programming, she does all of the animation, she does all of the, you know, the music, which I think is one of the, the most amazing and moving parts of the work that really bring it all together. The main kind of impetus for the work is this relationship to her own body as a black trans woman and also to other, other bodies and particularly black trans bodies, both um, alive now and in the past and this relationship to, you know, afterlife and the future and the past. So this scarf piece I actually made initially when I was doing my residency in Hong Kong and so really was, came out of pretty explicit research into revenge. This sculpture named Jack is a recent sculpture I made. I initially was thinking about the pump jack which is an oil extraction machine that really litters the Texas landscape. Something I am really invested in in my own work and what I get a lot from other people's work is kind of this idea of either making work for oneself and what that might mean generatively and uh, particularly if for whatever reason um, an artist feels or is marginalized or maybe hasn't historically had access to be able to kind of uh, create narratives about their own life and their own work and, and other people like them and similarly just kind of reframing these historical narratives that might be in more mainstream um, realms and how we can just rethink the world around us.